Welcome back to another edition of Vikings Film Room, brought to you by the Vikings Entertainment Network. I'm your host, Pete Bursich. So what do you do when your defense finishes at or near the bottom in almost every defensive category? Well, you get yourself a new defensive coordinator. And the first thing that coordinator is going to want to do is shore up that defensive front. So the Vikings signed Dean Lowry, formerly of the Green Bay Packers, defensive tackle, defensive end. You know, he plays both. Let's take a look at the film and see, however, what he brings to the table and what Dean Lowry does to shore up that defensive front and how our running defense should be vastly improved this year with him on the inside. So this first play, I think, exemplifies exactly what Dean Lowry's all about. And you'll see him outside the guard playing really three technique interior tackle. And a snap of this football, you're going to see both offensive linemen move to the left. And basically for Lowry, he's getting double teamed. That guard is chipping him, getting to that next level. And the center is able to get across his face and reach him. Now the key here is that Lowry's able to play into that block and play down the line of scrimmage, but not losing any yards in the process. He's able to maintain that line of scrimmage. Now, we're talking about a couple of feet here, inches per se, but that's important, and you'll see this. Lowry plays back into the center, down the line of scrimmage, keeps his hat in a crack on that inside shoulder, and is able to get in and make the tackle. Now, I think this next play really exemplifies where Dean Lowry is better than most in the NFL, and that's his strength with his arms. He's able to put his hands on you and make a guy stop. In the, in, in, the coaches refer to as his strong hands. He's got some strong hands on him. He's on the bottom left of your screen, and watch, this is just a simple reach block. That guard from the Bears is gonna turn and get himself on there. Now, what happens though is after contact, you see Lowry set his feet and get his inside hand in that shoulder, right in right here in the middle of the chest of that guard, and push him and pop and stand him up. And then he does a wonderful job of just releasing, chasing down the line of scrimmage, and then getting in on a tackle. It's really, really hard to reach block Dean Lowry. Now this next play against Tampa Bay, who, by the way, is one of the better offensive lines in this league, is another great example. You'll see Lowry on the right side of your screen over the guard, but watch when he makes contact. The ball is snapped, the guard short sets and fires out, and Lowry's able to get into him and extend those arms and push him into the center, thereby putting the guard in that A-gap. The running back cannot get through there. By having those arms locked out, he's able to get off the block, get down the line of scrimmage, and the pursuit level, the strength, and then the pursuit level is key to his game. Now this is one of my favorite plays I see I seen Lowry make last year. This is a counter play, right? So basically what's happening is that left offensive guard and the left offensive tackle are both blocking down. So Lowry's getting hit from the outside. So the offensive tackle has the advantage here. He's just merely stepping down and blocking Lowry. But we see what Lowry does is he shocks him, he hits him, and then works his way not just holding the point, because that's the key, hold the point, make that back go as wide as possible. He's able to cross face of that offensive tackle. And then watch this. This is Saquon Barkley getting through the line of scrimmage. He puts that big arm out and basically clotheslines Saquon Barkley, brings him right to the ground. This guy is strong. Now I chose a sideline view of this play because it gives you a great example of what it means to gain the line of scrimmage and own the line of scrimmage. You're gonna see Lowry's a three technique up top and he's gonna get blocked by this offensive tackle from the commanders who's gonna step down and block him. But as you see on the point of contact, the tackle is not gaining any ground. Lowry is again, as we've seen many, many times, getting his, his rear end down, getting those arms out, locking out that tackle and actually pushing the tackle back. And because he pushes the tackle back, that running back has to bounce and give a little bit more ground, doesn't have the short edge. And that allows for pursuit from all over to get there and stop that play. So he's basically maintaining that line of scrimmage, pushing it back and limiting yards per gain on the run. Now play number six shows you how well he can move even when he's stunting. So in this case, he's lined up in the B gap outside the guard. He's gonna take a step down because that linebacker is coming to the outside of him. So right away, once the ball snapped, that center turns his way. And by the way, that's a Pro Bowl center. And he's able to, again, get that right hand 
right underneath the chin of Ragnow, push it out, and then he's able to play down the line of scrimmage and use that other free hand to make the tackle. So he's very, very stout on the inside, even when stunting. Now another example of him, Dean Lowry, stunting, you'll see him, in this case, he's over the guard on the right side of the screen, and he's gonna loop outside away from the play. Now the key is this, once that ball snap, he loops to the outside and gets completely around this tackle, really whips on him, trying to get over the top. But watch what he does. He gets down the line of scrimmage and is able to pursue. And that's the key, is the pursuit. Get down the line and he's there to make that tackle. So it's not just getting around the block, it's afterwards. The pursuit, getting down the line of scrimmage level, making the play, not giving up a lot of yards on the ground. This is a great example of a backside cutoff. What do I mean by that? Well, you watch the Dallas Cowboys, you watch the tackle on the left side of your screen. He, the play is going to the right, defensive right, so he has to get across the face of Dean Lowry, and he just can't do that. As he blocks down and tries to get himself in front, Lowry, again, with that strength, gets that left arm in, get, creates that separation, but doesn't lose any ground doing it, plays the piano, gets down the line of scrimmage, and gets in on the tackle. So great job on the backside. Now we've seen what offensive guards, centers, tackles, they have trouble with this guy. Tennessee Titans try to block him with the tight end. So you see on the right side of your screen, two tight ends lined up. They're asking this tight end to just turn him out. Really, not do a whole lot, turn him out. But you watch when Lowry gets in and they make contact, he's able to push the tight end back into the backfield. So he's not losing any ground. Creates that space, able to get off and bring down the running back. Another example against the Bears. See Lowry lined up in the B gap between the guard and the tackle, but whenever these tackles try to block down, you'll notice he gets into them, gets that arm, doesn't lose any ground, and yet able to cross face of this tackle. This tackle should have him walled up. This should be an easy block. The tackle has the advantage. Lowry works into him, but watch the pursuit. Getting down the line of scrimmage, Another cutback, overruns it, turns around, gets the tackle for a loss. So in the passing game, what do you get out of Lowry? Well, you kind of get what you expect. He's, he's not a pass rushing phenom, so to speak. He makes his hay on first and second down. But what he can do is this. You'll see Lowry in this play outside the guard is just a simple pass pro. Guard turns out. But you watch Lowry when he gets into that guard. Again, just like he's strong in the running game, he's also strong as a pass rusher. The right hand, right here, right between the numbers on the guard, right up top. He's able to push, collapse him in, keep pushing him into the lap of the quarterback, and then come off and then get the sack. So as a bull rusher, he does a very, very good job, and he's able to collapse that pocket on the quarterback. Another great example of Lowry collapse in the pocket, you'll see him in this case outside the left offensive tackle. And on the snap of this football, He's heading north and south, and you'll see him just take this offensive lineman, this offensive tackle, and just push him up, get his arm up, and then you watch that left hand. He pushes, gets that arm off him, rips underneath, so he ends up looping underneath. But watch when the collision happens. He hits Fields, and Fields goes flying. He didn't fall down on him, but that's just how big and strong this guy is. He's like getting hit by a, like a Mack truck. And finally, there's special teams, because it all matters. In this case, the Bears are just trying to get a 30-yard field goal. Really, nothing too wound up about this one. But you see Lowry lined up over the guard. Now, you can't line up over the snapper. You can't touch the snapper. But just watch the strength, right? Ball snap. His pads get low. He gets underneath that tackle, gets to stand him up, gets that left hand up, and just gets a piece of that that field goal. So just a great job by Lowry playing some special teams, too. So overall, I think Lowry provides some much needed beef to this defensive front. He's able to hold the line of scrimmage, play laterally, get in on tackles. Very, very strong player. Now, he's getting up there in years and isn't playing the number of snaps that he has previously. So if the Vikings are able to keep him on a pitch count per se and limit the number of snaps that he plays week in and week out, I think we can get that kind of strength, that kind of productiveness, that kind of gaining the line of scrimmage and winning the line of scrimmage defensively out of this defense this year and those rush numbers those pass numbers all those defensive numbers should improve